So this morning, me and Noah have come to replace this PIR switch. Um, it operates the floodlight directly above. And one of the problems is it's obviously broken. You can see that. You see that, Noah? On the, on the light. Um, and it often gets set off in the wind. So I've already ran a cable, just a bit of one mil twin and earth, going down here. And we're gonna run, just put a, um, just a switch just so it can override the PIR. So, could you show that, Noah? So that the cable's already clipped in, it's down the other side of the water pipe, and then it comes down to there, and that's where the switch will go. But first of all, we need to replace the, the PIR. Oh, that's come off. Can you get in close on that one, Noah? We have our neutral conductor, obviously that, we have our CPC. We have our permanent live, which is the supply, and then we have our switch live, which then operates the floodlight. So we'll just confirm that they are dead. So we go onto the neutral. There's nothing there on the neutral live. Nothing there. What if you got electrocuted? Well, hope, hopefully I won't. So that is isolated okay. Now, we need to know which one is our permanent line and which one is our switch line. So just for that case, I'm gonna pull them out. Cap's just licking his paws. Well, the CPC's been twisted up, so we're just going to untwist that because these cables are a bit of a, a bit of a mess. I will make them a bit neater. Now, because it's there's an RCD on the circuit. We do have to be careful not to touch the neutral and the um, and the earth together. So get electrocuted. No, it won't won't get electrocuted, but it will it will cause the RCD to trip. Zap. And we don't want to do that. This is the supply line, and that is um, just one core and CPC. So I'm just going to strip these back a bit, make them a bit neater. Them out of the way. And we'll do the same to this one. That's what it looks like so far, Dad. Don't look up the head because things get a smash. Right. So look on the back here now. So I've just drilled out this hole here and this hole here, just with a little cone drill. And so the two supply cables, will, well, the two original cables will come in here and then my switch cable will come in here. And so I just have to notch it out from the side. It's dropped. It's now I'm dropped. dropped. We've got this now mounted on the wall and I'll take you a little bit closer to it. to just show you what we've done. So you can see all of the CPCs so the new CPC from the cable comes through round the back and then we've got it into like a little three-way um, Wago connector just tucked in the back. We have the original neutral conductor coming in. That comes into obviously the neutral terminal. We have the original live coming in. Goes into the live terminal obviously there. And then this is the switch line in which case we're gonna put this, this um, um, switch return in here. So all we've done is the original red cable that comes, um, that, that was the switch line that goes up to the light above. We've now put that into another Wago connector here, into the brown cable, which then comes down, which will eventually come down to the switch. And then when the switch is turned on, this will be, activated the switching line which then activates the light above now something that i have messed up with um, which isn't great is that i have used just normal twin and earth to um, use the switch wire i should have used twin brown for this um, which is something i do use quite a bit of so i'm just gonna have to put a bit of brown tape or sleeve in over the blue it's all relatively neat and tidy and they obviously doubled back all your connections um, make it as, as neat a job as you can. Um, 
you see where the cable comes in there I've just notched out the side of the box and it comes through into this hole just down into there um, it's all quite neat and tidy it's all quite compact in there I will because there is a bit of a gap around here I will run a small piece of silicon just to go around the outside edge just to help protect it okay so we've got Noah on the hammer drill so I was hold on to the handle so you're nice and comfortable and then just gently pull the trigger in that, hold on hold on you're in the wrong you're in the wrong position mate that one there that's a good yeah. start so keep it up straight so just nice and gently bit, bit harder bit harder bit faster Oh, good one. Keep the drill in. Back and back and keep, keep the drill in for that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Keep, keep the drill in. And come out. Perfect. That's tiring. Get the cable stripped. I drilled those and holes. The holes are drilled. Put the, My hands are cold. Put the screws in. Mm. Shall I touch these wires? Okay, so the box on there. We've used two washers there to keep it nice and secure. So the earth connection can go. On there. Uh, the wires. Wire I don't know how people find this interesting. <laughs> I just have to video it. I just feel like going to see it right now. It's a little bit of black and brown tape just to identify it. the switch and the feed comes down through the blue wire from this from the PIR comes into the switch and then from the um, through the switch and through the brown wire it then goes back up to the um, connection that goes up to the light and so in most cases this will just be left in the on position so there we have the PIR that's the cable that we've installed going down to the switch. And as you can see, the light above is on. Obviously the PIR is set on its minimum setting for daylight hours. And so if it does come on and they don't want, obviously it will be on for night time, but if it does come on when they don't want it on now with the switch, they can simply just turn the switch off and the light goes off but power is still at the PIR so the power, the PIR doesn't ever have to reset because it's permanently permanently got the life supply to it it's just the switch it's just that the switch line goes through a separate switch so it's basically just in series now that switch there is in series with the PIR switch so I turn it on and that will come on and then it will just reset. Hopefully that's a good job done.